for. And one of those things that we like to look at is the supply and demand. Because if we understand the competitors and what is going on, we want to be able to fulfill the demand for the buyers that and what they're looking for in housing. For example, back in 2006, uh, when we were getting to the peak of the market, which was somewhere out here, we had six, one, 1.6 million homes built. And that's in 2006. So if you guys can see from 2000 to 2006, 2000 is the, the net bubble, okay? So we had an increase from 1.2 million homes all the way to 1.6 million homes in six years. Then what happened is population growth could not keep up with all these homes being built. Uh, in fact, in 2006, uh, our population growth could only afford to have about 1.2 million homes built. So there was a surplus of uh, 400,000 plus homes uh, in the industry. So, and, and then what happened is all these builders be became very creative to offer incentives to buy for the consumers to come in and buy houses and all of that along with the increase in interest rates created uh, part of the mess that we got into in late 2007. So now if we for fast forward to 2016 we are at, at 800,000 homes and uh, I think this year we're going to be roughly around the same but our population growth can actually sustain about 1.4, 1.3, 1.4 million homes per year. So there's still a lot of opportunity for new homes to be built and we will continue to see that throughout the country. And we will continue to see that with a lot of amenities, a lot of uh, uh, pools and gyms and places to entertain uh, as we are trying to attract the millennials to be part of um, of the, the new uh, home buyers. In fact, if we start looking at how millennials are forming their homes, uh, we see that uh, for a while the millennial generation uh, became a little bit of a worry for most of us. And the reason is because they were taking longer to form their households. And uh, as many of you know, um, most of us, I'm part of the Y generation. I got married when I was 23. By the time I was almost 24 and a half, 25, I already had my first child. Um, I don't know of many millennials that are 23 years old getting married and having a child by 24 unless it was by accident. Uh, my choice at the time was to get married. I had a stable job. I moved out of my parents right away. I went and rented an apartment with my wife when I was 20, 23 years old. And then we bought our first home when I was 24 and had our kid by the time I was almost 25. So if we look at the millennials today, we can see that they are staying with their parents longer. Um, they are not taking financial risks as previous generations. And uh, that was a concern. But in the past couple of years, I think we're starting to see the formation of households within the millennials, which was a concern, like I said, for a lot of us, because most of them were not getting married. Uh, they were not willing to have kids. But uh, I think it has taken longer for them to adapt. I think now most people are willing to get married after they're 30 years old. And maybe because we see all these uh, promotions of everybody saying, oh, don't get married until you've parried. You, you actually parted out your, uh, you know, your younger years. So most people want to get married until they're 30 or mid 30s. Uh, I've seen even some uh, at their early 40s getting married. Um, but um, part of that has also been the slowdown in the economy. But I believe that now, as more households are being formed, we're also going to see this new construction because that's part of the demand that's going to continue to absorb this housing. 